<clears throat> What's up, baby? Hey, let me go ahead and put the shades on for this one. So we doing the CDL general knowledge test today uh, for the permit. It's pretty much the introduction uh, to the CDL. Uh, like I said before, I'm in Texas and we got to do the general knowledge, the air brakes, the combination vehicle and the Texas special requirement. Every other state, y'all just got to do the general knowledge, the uh, air brakes and the combination vehicle. Texas, we don't want to got to do four things. They try to make it hard for us for whatever reason. But um, yeah, man, I ain't gonna hold y'all up. I, I, I just want to help y'all pass this general knowledge part of the permit test. So you're gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna ask you about mm, about 40 questions or so today, and I'm gonna help y'all pass this thing. Just follow me. Follow my steps. I already didn't pass this, so I know I know the do's and the don'ts. I know the the majority of the question they're gonna ask y'all. So I got them for y'all right here. Let's do it. When approaching a traffic light that has been green for a long time. You should what? Let's think about that. You approaching the traffic light. It's been green for a long time. A, start slowing down and be ready to stop. B, maintain your current speed. Or C, speed up to get through the light. A, start slowing down and be ready to stop. Next question. If a tire fails while you are driving, you should what? A, Stop on the roadway if possible. B, stay off the brakes until your vehicle has slowed down. Or C, call your supervisor for instruction. The answer is B, stay off the brakes until your vehicle has slowed down. Next question. When you have to back you should always try to back towards the driver's side because A, backing towards the left side is more dangerous. B, you can see better and watch the rear of your vehicle on the right side of the window. C, none of the above. The answer is B, you can see better and watch the rear of your vehicle out the side of the window. Next question. The air storage tanks is for what? The air storage tanks in the truck is for what? A, are they are connected to the engine through gears or a V-belt? B, stop the compressor from pumping air? Or C, are used to hold compressed air? The answer is C, the air storage tanks in your truck are used to hold compressed air. Next question. When the spring brakes are on, you should A, press the accelerator. B, not push the brake pedal down. C, pump the brakes. The answer is B. When the spring brakes are on, you should not push the brake pedal down. Next question. How long will you lose your CDL for your first violation of an out of service order? A, at least 90 days. B, at least 120 days. C, at least 150 days. The answer is A, you will lose your license for at least 90 days. Next question, ABS, basically what is the ABS? A, it gives you more control over the vehicle during braking. B, is not available for doubles and triples. C, is not required on newer trucks. Mm, kind of self-explanatory, the answer is A, ABS gives you more control over the vehicle during braking. I know what the ABS lights are on your car. Same thing. Next question. Perception distance plus reaction distance plus brake lag distance plus braking distance equals A, total air pressure. B, total stopping distance. C, 
stopping distance minus break fade distance? The answer is B. All of those equals total stopping distance. Next question. On ramp slash off ramp curves should be taking A, at the posted speeds, B, well below the posted speeds, or C, slightly below the posted speeds? The correct answer, B. On ramp slash off ramp curves should be taking well below the posted speeds. Next question. An empty truck requires blank a full truck. A, less stopping distance than a full truck. B, an empty truck requires the same stopping distance as a full truck, or C, a greater stopping distance than a full truck? The answer is C, an empty truck requires a greater stopping distance than a full truck. So if the truck is empty, you have an empty trailer, it requires more stopping distance just because it's empty. You got to think about that. Like if you drive and you stop and if it's empty, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's, it's so light that it's almost harder to stop. So you got to stop a little bit further back just to get yourself in a breathing room versus a truck that already have is, is loaded and it's heavier. Next question. If you are traveling at 55 miles per hour in a 30 foot vehicle, how many seconds of following distance should you have? A, five seconds, B, four seconds, C, three seconds. Y'all gotta, gotta think about how, how, how long is the vehicle, first of all, and then after that, you gotta think about how many miles you are going. So the correct answer is B, four seconds. So we know he was driving over 40 miles per hour, ding, ding, and he was driving uh, a 30 foot vehicle. So you have to already add that extra second because he was driving over 40 miles per hour. And let's uh, every 10 feet, you gotta add a second too. So let's see, 10 feet, that's one second. Two, 20 feet, that's two seconds. 30 feet, that's three seconds. So you got the three seconds for the 30 feet. Plus you gotta add the extra second because he was driving more than 40 miles per hour. So that's four seconds of stopping distance. Next question. Retarders are what? A, all of the above. B, reduce the need for using your brakes. C, help slows the vehicle. The correct answer is A, all of the above. Escape ramps are A, Reserved for combination vehicles. B, used to stop runway vehicles safely. Or C, reserved for vehicles carrying dangerous goods. Escape ramps, believe it or not, are used to stop runway vehicles safely. So the correct answer is B. Glad hands are A, securement devices. B, coupling devices or C, warning devices? The correct answer is B, coupling devices. So for those of y'all who, um, who've who never dealt with any trucks or semis, I think it'd be so easy for y'all to pass this test if y'all actually go check out a, a semi or a truck. If you know anybody, go go to them and ask them, can, you, can they just show you the, where the parts are on these trucks? Or even if you pull up at a truck stop or anywhere, most people are pretty nice. Ask them, can they show you the parts on these different trucks? That will be so helpful in, in passing this test if you know about these parts and you can kind of visualize and see them. And if you can't, YouTube, you know, get on YouTube and just type in these certain parts and you'll be able to kind of better understand them once you get to visualize and see the parts on the truck. So that's my advice for that. Next question. To test the stopping action of your service brakes, go about A, 15 miles per hour, B, five miles per hour, or C, 50 miles per hour. The correct, quest, the correct answer is B, five miles per hour. So when you're doing that um, pre-trip 
and it's time for you to test them brakes. Yo, you have to test your um your tr your tractor brakes and your trailer brakes and your service brakes. So when it's time for you to check check that uh the test that service brake, you're gonna have to go a quick five more five miles per hour and then push that service brake down to check to make sure it works properly. So yep, correct answer B five miles per hour. Next question. When you have to back, you should always try to back towards the driver's side. Why? A, all of the above. B, you can see better and watch the rear of your vehicle by looking out the side window. Or C, you can watch the front of your vehicle by looking out the side windows. The correct answer, B, you can see better and watch the rear of your vehicle by looking out the side window. How can you determine your following distance? A, when the vehicle ahead of you passes a stationary object, such as a sign along the road, use the stopwatch on your smartphone to, de to determine how long it takes you to reach the same object. That was long. B, pass a stationary object and count how many seconds it takes the vehicle ahead of you to reach the same object. object. C, when a, vi when a vehicle ahead of you passes a stationary object on the side of the road, start counting down the seconds it takes you to reach the, that same object. The correct answer, C. First of all, A was when the vehicle ahead of you passes a stationary object, such as the side of the road, use the stopwatch. You don't want to use no stopwatch or no smartphone while you drive, man. Just go, oh, let me see how long it takes for that vehicle and me to pass this. No. And B was pass a stationary object, count how many seconds it takes the vehicle you hit or you do. How, first of all, how are you gonna count that? That was backwards. You can't pass an object and then count how much the person in front of you passed that same object when you walk. Uh, C, correct answer. When a tire fails, do not A, break unless you're about to run into something. B, Keep a firm grip on a steering wheel. C, stay off the brake until the vehicle has slowed down. Remember, they said do not. So that's that's something about the text. They, they, the test, they'll try to trick you if you don't slowly read these, um, these answers or these questions properly. So the correct answer is A, when a tire fails, do not brake unless you're about to run into something. You got to read it real slow and, and, and think about it before you hurry up and just try to click on something because you will think you got the right answer and it might be right, but you'll be forgetting that they said do not. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure you read that right. When you leave your vehicle, you should A, apply the service brakes, B, Leave the key in the ignition. C, none of the above. The correct answer, C, none of the above. Next question. Hydroplaning. A, is more likely if tire pressure is low. B, cannot occur when driving through a puddle. C, only occurs at speed above 50 miles per hour. The correct answer, A, is more likely if is more likely if tire pressure is low. Next question. If the vehicle ahead of you is smaller than yours, A, it can probably stop faster than yours. B, it will usually take longer to stop. C, it will take the same amount of time to stop. The correct answer, A, it can probably stop faster than you can. Before leaving your vehicle unattended, you should A, remove the keys, B, apply the parking brake, C, all of the above. Make sure you remove that key and apply that parking brake before you hop out of that vehicle. Escape ramps are, remember we already discussed this one, A, for combination vehicles only, B, for tankers only, C, used to stop runway vehicles. 
So y'all should already pretty much know that. But a lot of times they're going to ask these same questions just in a different type of way. And they just might, like I said, they might throw in a smallly different word that might throw you off. But the answer to that is C, use to stop runway vehicles. Play cards must be placed, A, on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle, B, on the front only, C, on the rear only. The correct answer, on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle, so A. The parking brake, A, should be used whenever you park, B, should be used when you need to apply the brakes firmly, or C, should be used when driving in bad weather. The correct answer, A, parking brake should be used whenever you park. If your trailer starts to ski, you should A, pump the brakes, B, release the brakes, C, steer in a direction opposite vehicle's rear. The correct answer, B, if the trailer starts to skid, you should release the brakes. If you have to drive off the road, you should A, fully apply the brakes until your speed has dropped to about 20 miles per hour. B, brake as hard as you can to maintain control. Or C, keep one set of wheel on the pavement if possible. The correct answer is C. If you have to drive off the road, try to keep at least one set of wheels on the pavement if possible. Which of these statements about vehicles fires is true? A, a burning tire should be cooled with water. B, if your engine is on fire, you should open up the hood as soon as you can. C. If the cargo in a van or a box trailer catches on fire, you should open the cargo door as soon as you can. The correct answer is A. A burning tire should be cooled with water. So like I said, some of these questions had me rolling, man. Had me cracking up. Don't, 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 don't. If y'all if y'all pick one of these crazy answers, I ain't gonna answer that, man, because I'm sure some people didn't, didn't feel picking some crazy answers, but a lot of this stuff is self-explanatory, man. You gotta read it carefully and think about it. Like, will I really open up the back of my truck if I know this thing is on fire back here? Come on now. All right, next question. Which of these statements about tires and hot weather driving is true? A, you should inspect your you should inspect your tires every two hours or every 100 miles when driving in very hot weather. B, if a tire is too hot to touch, you should drive on it to cool off. C, the air pressure of a tire decreases as the temperature of the tire increases. All right. The correct answer is A. You should inspect your tires every two hours of every 100 miles when driving in very hot weather. To correct a drive wheel braking skid, you should A. Increase braking, turn quickly, and counter steer. B. Increase braking. C. Stop braking, turn quickly, and counter steer. The correct answer is C. You should stop braking, turn quickly, and counter steer. Which of the following could cause poisonous carbon monoxide to enter the cab? A. Lack of engine coolant. B. Lack of engine oil. Or C. Exhaust system leaks. The correct answer, C. Exhaust system leaks. To prevent fatigue during long trips, you should A. Take frequent breaks. B, take a cold shower. Or C, rely on some caffeine. The correct answer, A, take frequent breaks. Don't be don't be trying to drive a, a thousand miles per hour and, and, and you tired and exhausted, man. Take a break. Call somebody. Get to stop, though. Get out. Take a break. Do whatever you need to do. But chill out.
Safety is most more important than anything, man. When driving on wet roads, you should reduce your speed by about A, one half, B, one third, or C, one fifth. The correct answer, B, one third. So reduce your speed about 33%. You are more at risk of being fatigued, A, when driving alone, B, when stopping periodically during long trips, or C, after getting more than eight hours of sleep? Correct answer is A, you are more tired when you're driving alone versus when you're driving with somebody. So that's just, you know, that's how it works. That's why I don't know, I guess some people do, do better with driving with a partner, but that's just something to think about. To avoid rollbacks when you start, you should A, if you have ma a manual transmission, partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off the brake. B, release the parking brake only when you have applied enough engine power. Or C, all of the above. Correct answer, C, all of the above. Next question. You are checking your tires for a pre-trip inspection. Which of these statements is true? A. Tires of mismatched sizes should not be used on the same vehicle. B. Radio and bias ply tires can be used together on the same vehicle. I don't even know if I said that right. C. A tread depth of 232 inches safe for the front tires. The correct answer is A. So we know for the front tires it's 432 inches, last 32. And, you know, um... Yeah, tires of mismatched sizes should not be used on the same vehicle. Which of these is the most important thing to remember about emergency braking? A, never do it without downshifting first. B, if the wheels are skidding, you cannot control the vehicle. C, disconnecting the steering axle brakes will help keep your vehicle in a straight line during emergency braking. The correct answer, B. If the wheels are skidding, you cannot control the vehicle. Next question. Which of these statements about backing a heavy vehicle is true? A, you should avoid backing whenever you can. B, helpers should be out of the driver's sight and use only voice signals to communicate with the driver. Or C, it is safer to back towards the right side of the truck than towards the driver's side. The correct answer is A. You should avoid backing whenever you can. If you don't have to back up and you can pull forward into whatever spot you're trying to get into, do it. Cargo that can shift should have at least blank tie downs. A, one tie down. B, two tie downs. C, three tie downs. The correct answer is B. Cargo that can shift should have at least two tie downs. Next question. High beams should be A, used when it is safe and legal to do so. B, turned on when an oncoming driver does not dim his or her lights. Or C, dimmed at the time that you get within 100 feet of another vehicle. The correct answer is A, your high beams should be used when it is safe and legal to do so. You are driving a vehicle at 55 miles per hour on dry pavement. About how much total stopping distance will you need to bring it to a stop? A. Twice the length of the vehicle. B. Half the length of a football field. Or C. The length of a football field. The correct answer, C. The length of a football field. That will be on the test. I'm, I'm like 99% sure. Most of these are probably about a 80 to 90% chance will be on the test. Um, not I don't know what order. They probably got a couple hundred questions, and uh, and they're gonna choose between those couple hundred questions exactly which ones they're gonna give you. There is all every time the test is gonna be different every time. So don't think you and somebody else gonna have the same exact test. It's not going to happen.